Welcome into the San Francisco 49ers report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Super Bowl 58 is set. And coming up on today's show, we're going to preview this game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. A rematch of Super Bowl 54 when the Niners suffered that heartbreaking defeat against Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, and the Chiefs. But the Niners looking to get their revenge after what has been up to this point. An absolutely epic playoff run with a thrilling comeback victory over the Green Bay Packers and an improbable comeback victory coming back from a 17-point halftime deficit to stun and take down the Detroit Lions. Going to be a little bit of a bye week in between the conference title games and the Super Bowl. So the Super Bowl going to get underway 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific on Sunday, February 11th from Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas. It's going to be the first Super Bowl matchup from Las Vegas. And the Niners go into this game, the early line, one point favorites with the over under checking in at 47 and a half. This could be a little bit of a defensive matchup, even though when you think about the star power of Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid, and Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy, Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and George Kittle, very good offenses, but a lot of defensive star power in this game as well. And an exciting programming announcement right here on the San Francisco 49ers report. Who's this guy right here? That is me. And I'm traveling to Las Vegas. I will be there from Monday to Friday providing coverage of the Super Bowl right here on the San Francisco 49ers report. You don't want to miss it, so make sure you subscribe. Turn on those notifications. Therefore, when we do go live, when we push out a video, you will be notified. We're going to do some live shows from Radio Row. We're going to interview players and coaches. I want to do some shows with other content creators, journalists, writers, and broadcasters. 49ers Report, live from Las Vegas. Can't wait for it. I do want to do a meet and greet at some point. We're thinking at some point on the strip on Thursday night in the lead up to the game. But stay tuned to the show for further details coming out about that. Now, as I said, it's going to be a rematch of Super Bowl 54 here in Super Bowl 58. That was the first Super Bowl championship for Patrick Mahomes. And then he won a second ring last year as they took back the Lombardi Trophy to Kansas City after beating the Philadelphia Eagles. And... These are two different teams, obviously, from that 2019 season. The Chiefs this year have a better defense, although their offense is a little bit worse. And the same can be said for San Francisco, but flipped. The 49ers' defense is not as good, and the Niners' offense is a lot better because I think that Brock Purdy gives San Francisco a clear edge at the quarterback position because I think that he is leaps and bounds ahead of Jimmy Garoppolo. As for the Niners' path to Super Bowl 58, they finished the regular season 12-5. They won the NFC West for the second consecutive year. Number one seed in the NFC, so home field advantage went through Levi Stadium in Santa Clara in the divisional round. Had to come back against the Green Bay Packers. Brock Purdy, 6 of 7 on that game-winning drive. Lifts the Niners to a 24-21 thrilling win. And then in the NFC Championship game, you thought things couldn't get crazier than the divisional round tilt. They got crazier in the NFC Championship game as San Francisco was disjointed. San Francisco was sloppy. They were getting dominated on both sides of the ball at the point of attack on the offensive and defensive lines. But then during halftime, Kyle Shanahan, Steve Wilkes make some great adjustments down by 17 points and they outscore Detroit by scoring 27 consecutive points after the break in route to a 34-31 win over the Lions. How the Chiefs got to Las Vegas, 11-6. It was a little bit rocky all year. They still won their division in the AFC West yet again. They were the number three seed in the AFC wild card round they beat Miami in the coldest game temperature wise in the history of the NFL playoffs 26 to 7 as they dominated Tua Tonga Vailoa and that Dolphins offense which could not matriculate the ball down the field against what is a fantastic Chiefs defense in the divisional round a thrilling game against Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills in which the Chiefs come back Bills miss a field goal wide right that lifts Kansas City to the AFC championship game 
and their defensive effort against the Ravens to make it to the Super Bowl was stupendous. They held Lamar Jackson in check. The Ravens turned the football over multiple times. They were out of rhythm, out of sync, shooting themselves in the foot with multiple personal foul penalties, as well as those turnovers. Kansas City pulls out the win, 17-10. to And this Chiefs run really has been spectacular. They won the Super Bowl last year against Philadelphia, came back from down 10 points at recess. And this year, their offense simply has not been the same explosive, consistent unit. And because things have been so choppy for Kansas City, this is really an incredible coaching job by Andy Reid, an incredible job by Patrick Mahomes to elevate his offensive teammates. It's also a great coaching job by defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo. So you have some of the marquee members of that organization, Mahomes, Reed, Spagnuolo, just doing a terrific job in just finding a way to get the Chiefs back on track when it looked as though this was maybe the worst Chiefs team of the Reed Mahomes era. And they probably have the worst offense of the Mahomes Reed era, yet they're still back in the Super Bowl. That's what great culture does. That's what great quarterbacking play does. That's what great coaching does. But also, they've been able to develop a lot of players, and they found their identity along the run. And what we found out, you can never bet against Patrick Mahomes. People bet against him when the Dolphins were coming to town. I didn't. I thought Buffalo was going to beat Kansas City. They, of course, choked. And then Lamar Jackson coming up short in a playoff game once again. And Mahomes goes through Josh Allen. He goes through Lamar Jackson. And now he's on the precipice of winning his third Lombardi trophy. And really, betting against Patrick Mahomes now feels like in the early 2000s, all the way up until about 2020, it feels like betting against Tom Brady. Now, the Niners here on the quest for six Super Bowl championships. The Niners now advancing to their eighth Super Bowl that is tied for the second most ever. With the win, the Niners will tie the New England Patriots and the Pittsburgh Steelers for the most Lombardi trophies ever. That would be six. And the Niners, with that win over Detroit, now have 38 playoff wins. That is the most in the history of the National Football League. It's also been quite a run for Kansas City. Six straight AFC Championship game appearances. Fourth Super Bowl appearance over the last five years, as a lot of you probably have, a lot of Chiefs fatigue. They won in 2019 against San Francisco. They won last year against Philadelphia, looking to go back-to-back. -back. And this Niners team, as we know, as well as fans worldwide, have a sour taste from that 2019 Super Bowl. You think back to Super Bowl 54. The Niners went into the fourth quarter up by 10. Patrick Mahomes on that ridiculous throw downfield to Tyree Kill got the wheels in motion. And then Jimmy Garoppolo late in the game missed Emmanuel Sanders on that long ball, which could have won San Francisco the game. And that was a heartbreaking defeat for the Niners. But is the makeup of this 2023 team different? The Niners have a lot of seasoned vets. They have a lot of players who were on that Super Bowl 54 team. And you think about the identity of, of this football team. You think about the identity and what was required to win the last two games against Green Bay coming back and against the Lions coming back. The Niners were clutch. Those games required mental toughness and fortitude, championship caliber pedigree. And there are a lot of Niners who were on that 2019 team, 10 of them to be exact. Fullback Kyle Juszczyk, wide receiver Debo Samuel, that was his rookie year. Tight end George Kittle, defensive end Nick Bosa, linebacker Fred Warner, linebacker Dre Greenlaw, defensive tackle Eric Armstead, punter Mitch Wisnowski, defensive tackle Kevin Gibbons, and backup tight end Ross Dwelly. They understood what happened in that game. Now they have an opportunity to right their wrongs. With that, I ask you to get your Super Bowl 58 predictions in down in the comments section right now. My prediction coming up a little bit later. Type SF for the Niners. They're technically going to be the away team or KC for the Kansas City Chiefs. Today's 49ers report is sponsored by Prize Picks. Daily fantasy sports made easy, and Prize Picks is the largest independently run daily fantasy sports app in North America. 
You pick two or more players. You choose more or less on their projected stat lines. You can combine your NFL, NBA picks, or NFL, and any other sports picks. It's easy and exciting daily fantasy, and with prize picks, you can win up to 25 times your money. And if you use that link down below, prizepicks.com slash CLNS, and you use the code CLNS, you get a $100 deposit match. What that means is you put $100 into your account, you get $100 back. That's $200 to play DFS, uh, DFS with. And you can tell me anytime you want because I've provided you with a lot of winners this year. And going into Super Bowl 58, they're running a Patrick Mahomes special. I know everybody's rooting for the Niners here who's tuning into the Niners report, right? But Patrick Mahomes, more than a half passing yard, I'm pretty sure he's going to be able to pick that up. Isaiah Pacheco, more than a half rushing or receiving touchdown. We know about the Niners' struggles against the run. And Brock Purdy, I know this Chiefs defense is really good. I'm going more than 248 and a half passing yards. Pricepicks.com slash CLNS. That link is available for you down in the description as well as in the comment section of this video. So big Chiefs injury news to get to going into the big game. Former Niner Charles Amenu, who has been very disruptive for Kansas City, a very important piece to what the Niners did the last two years in the playoffs and in the regular season as a depth edge rusher who could also swing inside and play defensive tackle. He tore his ACL against the Ravens in the AFC Championship game. He had a big strip sack of Lamar Jackson. This year coming off a of suspension, had seven sacks in 11 games. All-pro guard Joe Tooney, believed to have a torn peck that could keep him out of Super Bowl 58. And then Derek Nadi placed on IR with a triceps injury in the lead-up to the AOC Championship game. These are significant losses for KC. On the Niners' injury front, to be this deep into the season, 12-5 in the regular season, 2-0 in the playoffs, San Francisco continues to be about as healthy as it could be for this late in the year. Debo Samuel, okay. Obviously, some of the players that are already on IR are on IR, but San Francisco, very healthy this deep into the year going into the Super Bowl. Let's take a look at how the Chiefs stack up on the offensive side of the football and the defensive side of the football. When I told you that this Chiefs offense under Patrick Mahomes had struggled all year, it's backed up by some of the numbers. And over the next two weeks, we're going to continue to provide you with great insight on these numbers. Points per game, only 22 for Kansas City. That's very low for what we've been accustomed to seeing from the Chiefs. Yards per game, they are number eight. But they've struggled a little bit in the red zone as their efficiency, number 19. Patrick Mahomes always has a propensity to carve defenses up on third downs. That's what he's been doing this year. KC, sixth best red zone, or uh, third down efficiency unit in the NFL, and then yards per play at number nine. This Chiefs defense is one of the best in the Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes era. So they've always been a very complimentary team. This year they are that, especially with the offense starting to find its footing. Number two in points per game, number four in yards per game, number five in yards per play, third down rate number five, only allowing 36% on conversion rates. The Niners have the best Red zone offense in the NFL, the Chiefs' number eight red zone defense. You take a look at how Kansas City stacks up. Now let's flip the page to how the San Francisco 49ers look on the offensive side and defensive side of the football. Number two scoring offense in the National Football League. Number one in yards per game at nearly 400. Number one in yards per play. Third down rate number three because Brock Purdy has been so good in that area and number one red zone offense in the National Football League, as I said. Defensively, San Francisco, a couple of good numbers here. They do keep teams out of the end zone. That's the plus. Number three in points per game. Yards per game, number nine. Yards per play, number eight. But as we've seen against Green Bay, as we've seen against the Lions, they have been bad, especially of late on third downs. 27th in the NFL. That is not a good matchup against Kansas City, 14th in the red zone. Next up, my keys to the game. Patrick Mahomes is 28 years old, and I believe he's already third all-time in playoff wins. He is an alien with his ability to drop dimes, throw a touch in accuracy, drop his arm down to different angles, 
to complete throws from sideline to sideline, to throw the deep ball with accuracy and efficiency, with his ability to pick up yards with his legs, to scramble, but to also buy time within the pocket. He's a magician like we've seen from Brock Purdy at maneuvering inside the pocket. And there is really a formula out there to beat Patrick Mahomes, but not a lot of teams have been able to execute that formula. What is it? You think back to Super Bowl 55, this was after the Chiefs beat the Niners and then lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady. They got dominated in that football game. Tampa Bay beat KC 31-9, and Patrick Mahomes was pressured on 29 of 56 dropbacks. That is the most for any quarterback in Super Bowl history. Mahomes was running for his life. Looking down the gun barrel, he was sacked three times, and he suffered 10 quarterback hits. So this 49ers defensive line, which is getting paid a lot of money, is going to have to set the edge. They're going to have to have disciplined pass rush lanes, but they're going to have to get after Patrick Mahomes. And if you don't, it's going to be a long day because he will slice you up and dice you up. And it was good that Nick Bosa got back on track against Detroit in the NFC Championship game. One of my biggest keys going into the game, getting pressure on Jared Goff. And that is really how the second half turned because San Francisco was able to turn up the pressure. And Nick Bosa, in his first eight playoff games, had eight sacks. In his last four playoff games, he had zero up until that game against the Lions. He had eight pressures total, two sacks, two quarterback hits, two tackles, three run stops, he was the highest graded Niners defender. He earned his money in the NFC title game to help punch the ticket to the Super Bowl for San Francisco. Key to the game number two. If you like runners who run hard with no fear, like a choo-choo train who's going to bulldoze you, keep the feet moving, and run with so much physicality and power, kind of like Marshawn Lynch back in the day, Isaiah Pacheco is a slimmer Marshawn Lynch, and you can't let him get going. Because this is the snowball moving downhill for this Kansas City offense, so to speak. They establish the run. You just won't be able to stop the run and the pass combination for this Kansas City offense with Mahomes, even though the weapons are down. But the brilliant offensive strategy that Andrew Reid is able to come up with, especially with two weeks to prepare. And the Niners have continued to struggle against the run especially here in the playoffs. They've made some adjustments for sure, but they need to be able to stop the run against Kansas City. The Lions ran it 29 times for a buck 82, 6.3 yards per carry. A bulk of those yards, yes, coming in the first half. But then the Packers and the divisional round ran it 28 times for 136, 4.9 yards per carry. San Francisco has to tackle well. They have to shoot the gaps. They have to have contain on the edges and defend the edges, and they have to, have to stop the run. Key to the game number three, it's going to be Brock Purdy against this terrific Kansas City Chiefs defense, led by one of the best defensive minds in football in the aforementioned Steve Spagnuolo. My thoughts here, in order to beat the Chiefs, the 49ers and Brock Purdy are going to have to bring it for 60 minutes. They can't play a solid 30 like they did against Detroit. They can't get it together in the final 15 minutes after a bad 45 like they did against Green Bay. It is going to take a full 60-minute effort for San Francisco. You're going up against Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and a very good defense that's one of the best, if not the best, in the NFL. And if you start off slow, the Chiefs can smell blood, they can take advantage of that, and then coming back against the Chiefs is always very, very difficult. And you would hope that after a lackluster game against Green Bay, after a good second half but a bad and porous first half against Detroit, with two weeks to prepare, can Kyle Shanahan come up with the creative game plan? Can the Niners be pristine with their assignments? Can they not turn the football over? And can Brock Purdy put together a full four quarters. What he did in the second half against Detroit was spectacular. And the detractors are still going to try to find a way to move the goalposts and say that he still stinks, even though he let a comeback effort against Green Bay. And then he did the same coming back from 17 against Detroit. You can continue to shape the narrative all you want. 
Brock Purdy is a baller. Brock Purdy's been clutch. And what do we judge quarterbacks on? Coming through and delivering when the pressure cooker is on. And Purdy in the second half against the Lions, nearly flawless. 13 to 16, 174 through the air, a touchdown, passer rating of 132.8. 52 rushing yards, his ability to make plays out of structure, to extend plays in the pocket with his legs, but to also take off and run it, change the momentum partially of that football game. And Kansas City is going to bring a ton of pressure. They're going to throw the house at Brock Purdy to see if he can respond. Purdy has to play clean, but also, can he run a little bit more? And if Brock Purdy can run a little bit more, it gives the defense something else to think about. And Detroit really couldn't stop it. And you could tell it took the air out beneath their sails. And Purdy under pressure against the Lions, I thought he was pretty good. He was 6 of 11 for 88 yards. He did throw that one interception, but he made a couple of other impressive throws as he was looking down the gun barrel, taking a massive hit to Debo Samuel, to Brandon Ayuk. He can deliver. When he's taking shots right to the chest, no, uh, that's kind of a pause there, but you get what I'm saying. And then the two carries for Brock Purdy for the 42 yards, they came in critical junctures of the football game when there was nothing downfield or pressure got home and he was able to extend plays with his legs. Key to the game number four, I'm still laughing about taking shots to the chest, from defenders who were hitting him on the pass rush. Number four, take away Travis Kelsey here. This Chiefs weaponry is the worst that it's been under Patrick Mahomes. They don't have a Tyree kill. They don't have a player like last year in Juju Smith-Schuster. They have a rookie in Rashid Rice. They have a mentally fickle Kadarius Toney. Travis Kelsey is still really, really good. But if you take him away, the other receivers can't really get separation like some of the past wide receivers have been able to do with Patrick Mahomes and throwing them the football. Taylor Swift's boyfriend this year still had a pretty productive season, 93 catches, 984 yards, five touchdowns. I think that the injury that he suffered in the preseason to his knee did kind of linger all year because he did lack some of that speed and elusiveness, wasn't able to break tackles to the same degree. He was still really good. Not as good as George Kittle, but still a very, very productive season as Patrick Mahomes' number one target. But he looks a lot healthier in the NFL playoffs. And he's back to being that explosive tight end who is just a menace to stop in the pass game. Three games in the playoffs so far because Kansas City didn't have a first round bye. He's been targeted 27 times, so nine times per average per game. He's caught 23 of those balls, 262 yards, and three touchdowns. The Chiefs have found ways to get him the football in a variety of ways, whether it be a quick hitter, whether it be down the seam, whether it be on an out route, and Travis Kelsey has been able to look like vintage Travis Kelsey and turning back the clocks as he continues to age just a little bit throughout the NFL playoffs. And in turn, it's going to be a big game for Fred Warner. Fred Warner is going to be matched up with Travis Kelsey often. And the good news for San Francisco is that Fred Warner is the best off-ball linebacker in the NFL, and he's one of the best, in my opinion, off-ball linebackers in the history of the game. And he's really good at covering tight ends like Travis Kelsey. Because of his speed, athleticism, he also has that track down speed if he does get beat. Just a tremendous instinctual linebacker and a great team leader. Overall pro football focus grade this year for Fred Warner of 90.1. Run defense grade of 90.7. A coverage grade of 83.3. It's going to be a matchup of premier player against premier player with Fred Warner going up against Travis Kelsey. Dre Greenlaw might draw that assignment. D'Amador Lenore in the slot, slot might draw that assignment as well. Fred Warner, Travis Kelsey, can't wait for that matchup. You take Kelsey away, this Chiefs offense and the complexion of it is a lot different. Key to the game number five. I want to see San Francisco, again, with two weeks to prepare, with a creative offensive mind in Kyle Shanahan, good play designer, who was in his bag in the fourth quarter against Green Bay, who did a masterful job of making adjustments after halftime against Detroit, use all of the weaponry at his disposal. You have Christian McCaffrey, you have George Kittle, you have Debo Samuel, and you have Brandon Ayuk, and you have Brock Purdy with Trent Williams at left tackle. And this offensive line has done a solid job, I'm not going to say great, but a solid job at protecting Brock Purdy. Kyle Shanahan 
against this really good defense has to shift the eye level for the Chiefs defense from sideline to sideline. He has to be able to stretch the field vertically. you got to be able to get creative in the run game in establishing the run to open up play action for Purdy. you got to be able to target the middle area of the field. And as we've seen from Purdy, he can also throw from sideline to sideline. I want to see Shanahan work and operate this offense both vertically and horizontally to put the stress and the pressure on Kansas City's defense. With that, I asked you earlier to predict who you think is going to win. Now I want you to predict the score. My prediction here, it just feels like the Niners here. And for them to win that Packers game in improbable fashion and to come back against Detroit, was, was, which was a thrilling game, I do think that San Francisco is going to win this football game by a final score of 28-27. to 27. To complete their quest for six, they're going to take down Patrick Mahomes. It is not going to be Kansas City's year. And this magical season, this magical run with all of these marquee veterans and multiple players on this roster who are future Hall of Famers, all pros, Hall of Famers, are going to finally get that Lombardi trophy. Kyle Shanahan's going to get that Super Bowl ring as well, which in turn makes him one of the most influential offensive minds in the history of football, and Brock Purdy is going to shut all the haters up by taking down Mahomes in the Super Bowl. 28-27, my final score for Super Bowl 58 will be in Las Vegas, providing you with great coverage, and we're going to continue to do that in the lead-up to this game.